Добрый день, уважаемые дамы и господа. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to be moderator of this session, this plenary session. Uh, and uh, so, unfortunately, we are 15 minutes uh, behind, but uh, we'll finish in an hour and a half. Uh, allow me to invite uh, to the stage uh, the participants of the plenary session. Uh, Marat Usnulin, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, on issues related to development and housing construction. Uh, please. Remir Dekra, uh, architect, partner of the Architect Bureau, OMA, a member of the Skolkova City Council, the development of the concept agglomeration, a participant and the head of the think tank uh, concerning these issues, please. Uh, Paul Osterkara, uh, Paul Ostergar, uh, an urban uh, designer, executive uh, vice president, urban designer associates, uh, executive director. He specializes uh, uh, in the development, a uh, new evolution of the cities and embankments. Tatiana Malieva, an economist, sociologist, the director of the Institute of uh, Humanitarian Development of Mega City, instituted by the government of Moscow. And uh, before uh, she held the office of the independent policy development uh, of the city of Moscow and the, and the, and the member of the Presidential Council on the issues related to the human side of the city development. Uh, architect and economist and sociologist, uh, president of uh, the Fundacio Metropoli uh, of the Spanish Fund, uh, dealing with uh, the uh, learning and development of information and, and uh, uh, expanding and contributing and information related to the city development plans, uh, so the planning strategy and the key speaker of today's session. Uh, Uma Adesumili, so head of the Department of Planning and Management of the Agglomeration Development of Mumbai. Architect and urbanist, uh, uh, he held uh, different uh, posts uh, uh, in the government, uh, so from city planning to the regional planning transfer that has been accomplished. Uh, dear friends, allow me to explain the task and how we're going to proceed. Uh, we are talking about the agglomeration. Agglomeration is a live uh, uh, creature, so which does not fit into the administrative boundaries. It has its own logic, its own development, its own evolution. And uh, the agglomeration impacts the lives, not only the lives of the neighboring regions, but the economic dynamics and the development of the city in general and the country in general. That's why the issues related to the management of global agglomerations uh, acquire special importance. It's not the issue of the management of a single city, but it's the issue of the management how the uh, neighboring regions uh, interact, how they cooperate, what it gives it to the city, what's the impact, what happens to the transportation, traffic, human capital, uh, talents, uh, because the city, the city goes outside its own boundaries. It's much bigger than the city, not spatially, not dynamically. It's much bigger entity. So when this agglomeration effect, synergy effect in the development and economic growth, that is why to develop uh, a set of instruments that would allow to manage the agglomeration effects, the agglomeration uh, achievements and substance uh, uh, for the purposes that uh, uh, that we are looking for in the city and outside the city living in the Russian Federation. Uh, so that's a very challenging task. So how I suggest we uh, uh, proceed now. So the first speech uh, uh, will be made by Maria Tsukersic Usnulin. Mr. Usnulin, uh, not, uh, uh, not, not because uh, we uh, respect uh, uh, his position, but we want to see what are the main Uh, so then, because he will talk about, uh, because what what are the main tasks? Uh, uh, what is it that we're going to uh, uh, to decide? What issues to resolve? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so this uh, we need to talk about these uh, influences and these challenges, and so. 
And that will be whether the, the Alfonso Ligara will make his key presentation. So 20 minutes. And then the co-speakers, uh, and Degra, Dega, Malik Maliva, and, and the uh, Oma Adusabid. And uh, after that, we'll try to, uh, uh, to put it under the common denominator, make some uh, final comments, comments. And maybe we'll have a chance to ask a few questions, depending on the time frame and uh, how well they will fit into the time slots. Uh, allow me to remind you that in Moscow, I am known as a very uh, strict uh, moderator, and so I will be, I will be, I will be talking, uh, telling you when your time is up. Mm. Uh, so please, uh, Mr. Vice Premier, uh, will you please uh, approach uh, the uh, lectern and uh, start your speech? Thank you. Uh, good uh, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So I've been talking non-stop today, making presentations, telling what Moscow is doing, what is pl plans to do. But I'm doing that in order to get your feedback uh, from all present here. And uh, it's very important for me. Uh, another issue that as a result of the forum, just with us, was not to sit and talk and then and then part our ways. That's not. It's not the task. The task is just to see the prospect, the strategy, uh, the long-term view, uh, establish good relationship, uh, uh, strike business relationship, get new partners. This is this is the the most important goal. And I'm very happy that in this conference room and among the people who are going to talk today. So I see my colleagues. Uh, 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 who participated in the international forum on the concept of development of Moscow agglomeration. And this is great. So this great job, very difficult, long, painstaking work has been done, which gave an impetus for our uh, uh, common cooperation, joint cooperation for the future. And all these events, then we, when we held this standard about the concept. So we started out uh, 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 on the long way of mutual cooperation. And uh, so this is important that now we're going to implement all this. And I can I can tell you that if we look at and uh, so what are the trends? So Moscow in the last ten years has uh, uh, grown uh, in terms of population by fifteen percent. Uh, so the housing increased by fourteen percent. Uh, uh, so commercial offices increased uh, three times, six six point five times. Uh, so uh, retail offices increased 3.5 times, and uh, so the national regional GDP in Moscow grew twice. Uh, Moscow uh, is truly, uh, from the uh, from the viewpoint of the rate of growth, is a huge uh, metropolis, and we managed just to uh, overtake, uh, uh, so to take care of the crisis uh, uh, legacy. And uh, while 2002 the growth of investments were about 5 percent annually, so then today we can say that the investments in Moscow. Uh, 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 currently uh, come up to more than 20 percent annual. That's a big figure. And uh, if we uh, 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 even talk in terms of numbers, uh, uh, then last year uh, we built housing. Housing, we built uh, more and the real estate, uh, other uh, assets, uh, uh, 7 million square meters of real estate uh, was built last year. So this year we plan to build about 7 million, 7 million uh, uh, square, square meters of real estate. We occupy the uh, position number 19. So we are in the six largest cities of Europe. At the same time, we have a huge potential uh, for improvement. And so we spoke to our colleagues and we were discussing issues said the international uh, tender and uh, one of our colleagues said that Moscow effectively has a huge competitive advantage which is uh, actually so big high with the high density of the population uh, we have still uh, a lot of big within big demand that has not been identified so because housing we're building and still sells well so whatever asset we build it's all sells out like hot hot uh, uh, pies and what is what is the demand? The demand is money and the ability to sell, and the purchasing power is there. And so we we attract the best talent, so the best people, and so we're working very well on this.
there's potential uh, and it's the only way that we should use this potential properly. Uh, we believe that what are the tasks, what are the way to go? Uh, the city should continue developing. It should become an innovative uh, technological city, but still remain comfortable and cozy for the residents and friends and keep the history and culture and the nature. And developing the plans and um, uh, uh, the idea of uh, further taking the city out. So we need to create the comfortable city environment that would be uh, very friendly for uh, working, living, uh, tourism, and travel. And of course, the transportation issue is the uh, key one, is the cornerstone. And we need to create the common, sp the public space. We are not trying to create the public or pedestrian zones. And Mr. Sabanian has approved an unprecedented program to refurbish parks and uh, refresh parks and um, a little uh, 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 green corners of the cities. We have uh, already made a, a, a lot of them renewed a lot of, and of course underground spaces uh, is another important element of development. We believe that the city should develop by permanent investment inflow. And our goal is to create uh, the conditions to uh, attract them. And uh, today the uh, revenue for, from construction activities, the main source of revenues into the city budget. And certainly we would like to keep this trend so that we would keep uh, this uh, source of revenue. And uh, we want to create an international financial center in Moscow, innovation, cultural, and tourism center in Moscow. So what are the principles that we apply today when we develop the city? Firstly, uh, what all our colleagues and uh, friends recommended, uh, so polycentric development of the capital, stabilization of development, uh, uh, center, uh, the downtown uh, harmonious development. By the end year end, we plan to uh, submit the new law to the State Duma to, to, to uh, the rules of the land use and the construction in the historical downtown. Maybe foreign colleagues do not understand, uh, but our Russian representative definitely feel that it is a very important city building and development document that opens the opportunity to attract investment and stabilizing and fixing all the all the rules uh, 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 in the downtown, in the very heart of the city. And uh, another task that we target is to reduce the barrier in city development. You all know that today, in order to invest in Moscow, you need to uh, do a lot, a lot of effort. Uh, and um, uh, unfortunately, the uh, uh, efforts uh, and the investment climate uh, we need to create, uh, this is our primary task. And this year, historical date, Moscow uh, grew by 148 hectares of land, and certainly we are extremely happy because it gives us huge, huge opportunity and potential. On the other hand, we are facing colossal issues uh, in the new Moscow. This is a very good example that the proper development policy in the city uh, created lots of problems. So today in the in the new Moscow, I would say uh, we we sold thirty thousand uh, land of uh, plot uh, plots of land sold without any plan, without any development structure. So it means that people are going to build houses. There are no roads, no social infrastructure. We are now looking for an opportunity to build a kindergarten. There is no plot. There is no land. We need to build a hospital. There is no territory because it it has all been sold, and in private ownership unfortunately we cannot we cannot even uh, do something some development around those uh, houses and cottages so we have big issues and let me tell you that in the new territories we have the opportunity to build around 100 million of square meters on uh, of uh, real estate uh, of residence this is our colossal potential uh, for the new next year so we develop the new territory we study the experience of all the colleagues and we are now getting the statement statement of statement of work for the for the master plan and so now our task is to prepare the statement of work for the master plan of development of the city until the end of the year so we just will finish the land ownership and development and until the end of uh, 2014 we're going just to uh, uh, to develop the final and affirm and uh, confirm the final plan 
one of the master plan development. And so it's not only just a picture, nice picture, but we need to identify. So what finances, the budgeting, uh, 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 and uh, the time frame, and uh, so again, just to validate the results. So we need to be more specific. So having studied the situation, having studied the entire territory that uh, that has been attached currently, so we see that there is 12 uh, uh, point of growth in the new territory that we can observe. So one of the most important ideas uh, is to develop new jobs, create new jobs. And uh, so you said this, ideally, it would be great if we could uh, create uh, uh, 1.5 to million jobs. And uh, so maybe just up to 1 million will be uh, living in that era. And this is the task of the task order, so which is the basis that needs to be uh, confirmed. Uh, and uh, so, and, and, and I w we welcome all the participants, all the stakeholders, and uh, so that's what during the tender, so our colleagues were doing, and uh, and uh, so they're preparing, they're prepare putting together the master plan. So these twelve uh, points of growth. Uh, uh, so the main, this this is where. So they were again just uh, so mo mostly it's uh, retail uh, warehouses, uh, recreational zones will be built, and uh, and uh, and a little bit of housing construction as well, but mostly retail, wholesale, and uh, uh, office. Uh, so then, in order just to provide the transportation infrastructure, so we completely changed uh, our plans from the viewpoint of development of transport infrastructure uh, in uh, in Moscow and the new in the new Moscow, and uh, so we can see that this territory has uh, uh, the two main railways uh, as the main backbone, and uh, so and, and three radial uh, highways and uh, railways, and we have seven or uh, eight additional. Uh, parallel uh, highways, uh, roads that would connect this uh, this grid all together, just as a Moscow, the old Moscow, new Moscow, and the neighboring area. So, transport-wise, we have made uh, we have taken uh, an unprecedented program in the area of the development of transport infrastructure, confirmed by the government documents already, approved by the government of Moscow, and now we have the necessary financing for the nine years coming. We have the program development of Moscow Metro. What it means? It's 150 kilometers of additional metro lines, 70 stations, uh, and no less than 70 stations. So 15 new uh, uh, depots uh, uh, for the uh, rolling stock. And so the total value uh, is at, at about 30, 35 billion dollars uh, will be invested for the development of Moscow metro lines. And uh, so last year, uh, so we have already adopted uh, this program approved by Moscow State Duma. And uh, uh, so the $5 billion will be invested only next year for the development of the metro. So we have uh, approved uh, the program of the development of uh, 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 traffic. Mm. And uh, so the reconstruction of highways and roads in, in the big city is a challenging task and very unpopular task. That that is why uh, so they, we, they they are criticizing us sometimes with ground reason, but at the same time so in our density of the housing so it's impossible next to impossible to build new roads. That is why the the, the trick is just to to widen uh, our uh, highways that uh, uh, leave the city that get out of the city and then to increase the capacity of the public transportation uh, and. Uh, uh, so we'll try just to to shift the main burden of transportation to the pl uh, to the public transportation because building new roads is is very challenging in Moscow. <laughs> We have approved uh, the program development of railway uh, component, and uh, in Moscow we have 200 kilometers of railway tracks, and so which uh, some some of them are used as passengers, some of them as cargo, uh, 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 and uh, but uh, we uh, with uh, jointly with the Russian railway systems we developed a program and we plan to build 220 kilometers of additional railways. So the value of the program for the next eight years amounts to seven billion dollars. Then another very important uh, uh, task, those who watch the uh, workings of the government of Moscow. So there was a new document that was recently published uh, which has the list of 255 uh, transportation hubs, uh, transfer hubs. And uh, so for the next 15 years, so when there where the main hubs will be, so with which transportation means they will intersect and how they will operate. So 225 uh, transportation hubs uh, tentatively uh, uh, meter-wise, 3.5 square meters of real estate State will be built, and there's a big potential room for improvement that will completely uh, 
uh, change the way Moscow looks like. And uh, so that will give, give additional impetus for the development of our industrial zones. Plus, we have uh, railway tracks leading to all industrial zones. So 7,000 hectares of industrial zones, that's a big uh, a point of growth, a driver of growth. And uh, I keep repeating, so relying on their experience, all our friends recommended that, uh, that besides the development of the new Moscow, so we need to develop the uh, old industrial zones of Moscow. And so then there are several uh, approaches. We approved uh, the uh, uh, the development of uh, of. Uh, of, of the uh, uh, sports assets, uh, up to six million square meters of uh, worth of sports assets. So there will be championship cup uh, uh, in a few years, and so we have special programs. So we plan to build six uh, million square meters worth of hotel space, and uh, and uh, all this is part of the programs. And we hope that before the end of 2014, all our plans or the developments will have been approved and will be implementing jointly with you. Thank you. And uh, uh, they will start talking. Uh, so the best, the best brains will start uh, uh, sharing their experience. Uh, so we'll get the benefit of their vast knowledge and experience, and they will be taking. Uh, 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 turns to to speak. What is it that you're interested? Think of good questions. Uh, uh, put these questions to those wonderful experts to make sure that both the government of Moscow and the mayor of the city, so then should know what to do. That's a very important uh, uh, topic, and uh, and uh, the uh, competition that raised a great deal of interest. Uh, so then, developing this master plan in order to increase the economic attractiveness of the city. I remember that uh, uh, Loma spoke very well. Uh, what is uh, what is going to happen if we capitalize the assets, real estate, land, and how what kind of profits we can derive from it? And we spoke at length about that, and we came out with our proposals. That's why they would like them to touch upon these issues again. <coughs> That's one issue. Then another thing that I would like uh, uh, to know, this, uh, my colleague uh, spoke from Amsterdam, so development of the city. How can we, uh, of, of the river, how can we get the most of the river? And uh, so he spoke very well about that topic. And uh, so because maybe to consider the development of the river, uh, reshaping the river as, as a point of growth as well. And so we started working on this issue, and the uh, the uh, head architect is dealing with it now. And we certainly want uh, you would like you to share uh, this experience uh, from the viewpoint how the river impacts the development of the city. Thank you. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, now we'll begin uh, the presentation. Let me remind you that. Uh, so, so then, uh, uh, so a generation of capitalization of land, real estate, uh, getting profits, getting money out of it, monetizing it. And this is a very important issue. Then the human potential, human capital issue is very important because I think that it's uh, so this subject is of interest to the government and all those involved in it. Uh, Dr. Nigara, uh, if I. Uh, mm, Основной доклад, доктор Альфонс Вигар, прошу вас. Hello, it's a real privilege to participate in this in this event, and congratulations for the level of ambition that the city of Moscow is showing in defining their future. It's very difficult to find another city around the world that, in this this moment, has the level of ambition for transformation that the city of Moscow is really showing. And the capacity to attract international talent. This forum is one clear, clear example of that. We live in, in a world of cities. If you see this uh, image, you have cities over one million in 1950, 2000, 2025. The biggest challenge of the world is building really a sustainable future. And cities are really the key because Cities as the engine of the, of the global economy. And cities are the new cluster of the global economy. 
not the vertical cluster, but the horizontal cluster that will generate competitive advantage for the future are really the cities. How the cities is planned, how the cities is organized, a key for the competitiveness of the, of the, of the future. So Fundación Metropoli is an international center of innovation in cities and regions. And I would like to share with you some of the experience of the Fundación Metropoli working with cities around, around the world. You see, these are the cities uh, that over the last 15 years, Fundación Metropoli has been working around the world using a clear methodology to discover the component of excellence of each city and the strategic choices, the strategic project for the future. We call Acoconcha projects. Each city has different possibilities to deal with the urbanism, but it's very difficult to select the right choice. The only projects with the capacity to generate competitive advantage internationally are projects based on strength, based on the component of excellence. We call based on the cluster of excellence of the city. And it is important to have methodologies to discover the component of excellence of the city. We did this research in collaboration with these 20 universities. And in our foundation, we do three things. One is research design of cities and incubation, going from ideas to reality, looking mechanism to integrate the private sector in transforming the cities of the future. The first idea I would like to share with you is the new scale of thinking, which is the scale of the city. This is a, a program uh, we participated with the Regional Plan Association of New York some uh, five years ago, which is called America, Urban America 2050. These are the 10 super cities or mega city regions in America. For instance, the Northeast Corridor. Here you see the density of New York in the center. Washington, Philadelphia, New York, Boston. This is the new scale of competition. And this is the new scale of cooperation among cities around the world. Thinking about municipalities, thinking about traditional metropolitan areas is not enough. It is necessary to think at the new scale, where the airport system, the logistics system, the innovation system can really interact and to create competitive advantage. Coming back to Europe, uh, this is the European Diagonal, another project of Fundación Metropoli. You see the economic space of Lisbon, 16 million people. The, the city of Lisbon has only 2 million, but the economic space of interaction is 16 million. This is Madrid, 32 million, Barcelona, 29, Marsella, Milano. This space, the European Diagonal, has points of special urban intensity. We call the diamonds, the diamonds of the diagonal. The Portuguese diamond, Mediterranean diamond, Cote d'Azur diamond. These are a new scale of thinking that can inspire infrastructure, airport system, the port system. So this is a new scale of thinking for cooperation and competition among cities. And you have in Moscow a real super city. You have the possibility of creating uh, one of the most competitive and most livable cities in the world. If you are work with the level, working with the level of ambition you are showing in the recent uh, years. I think this is a possibility of creating the diamond of Moscow the new diamond, a diamond in a hinge point between Europe and Asia, Middle East, very strategic location. I would like to share some of the experience of Fundación Metropoli working with cities in other territories. This is Singapore, more or less the size of Moscow municipality. This is the island of Singapore. This is Singapore today. Singapore is a city that changed the economy. Urbanism and economy is closely connected. You can really create competitive advantage, not only developing sectorial policies, but doing urbanism, doing strategic urbanism, you can really make the difference and create competitive advantage. In the case of Singapore, Singapore went from labor-intensive economy in 60s to a skill-intensive economy in 70s, to capital intensive economy in 80s, creating the financial center of Singapore, and then in 19, technology intensive, in 2000, knowledge intensive, and now 
innovation intensive economy. And that is a clear relationship between the urbanism and the economy of the city. Ten years ago, we began developing this One North project, which is a new generation of technology parks. In this case, it's a technology park based on biotechnology, multimedia, digital technologies. This is a One North. This is only two million square meters site with mixed use. Ten years ago, the idea of creating mixed use, because mixed use not only at the level of the urbanism, but also at the level of the architecture, this mixed use allows for people from different character, artists, entrepreneurs, academics, research, students, scientists, working together and promoting innovation and creativity. Without this uh, fusion of activities, is very difficult innovation. Innovation do not happen only in different sectors. Innovation happens at the intersection of different disciplines, and this is important that in the city we can create a fusion city beyond zoning, beyond traditional zoning, that can inspire micro rayons, all industrial sites in Moscow and other uh, parts of the city. This is the result of the One North project. This is an idea for creativity and a park for attracting uh, talent. That was 10 years ago. What is doing now Singapore? Singapore today discovered a new economic cluster. It's the cluster of urban solution. You see this figure. This is the amount of money that the world will spend in urban solution over the next 30 years. In 30 years, this amount of money is seven times the GDP of the world. This is the amount of money that cities will spend in urban solution over the next 30 years. For this reason, Singapore is opening a new market, considering the city as a laboratory of urban solution and exporting this solution abroad. Working with other cities, creating technology parks, developing new cities in China, in India, now in Brazil, new uh, transport solution, new traffic regulation system, new port management, airport management. So every single initiative in Singapore is part of the living lab. It's about attracting ideas, talent, capital, experimenting and export abroad. This is the only city in the world that is doing this strategy of using the city as a laboratory of urban solution and helping with the brand of Singapore, local companies to operate globally, to operate internationally. This is Singapore. Um, I would like to share finally to uh, finalize my presentation and experience in Europe, in Bilbao. This is Bilbao. This is the European diagonal and the traditional center of Europe. Center of Europe will not be anymore about center and periphery. The diagonal is a project to rebalance the, the economy in Europe and to create a much more integrated territory. Bilbao is uh, probably one of the most um, successful experience of urban rehabilitation in Europe, living from an industrial period to an urban transformation over the last 30 years, and now beginning a knowledge revolution. This was the Bilbao 30 years ago, a flooding destroy the historical center of the city that was Bilbao 30 years ago, and this is Bilbao today, after the urban revolution. In 30 years, it is, this is the case. And similar to Moscow need to recover a dialogue with the river, Bilbao um, <clears throat> developed the whole transformation, creating a new dialogue between the city and the river. Bilbao spent seven times more money in cleaning the water than in building the Guggenheim Museum. The Guggenheim Museum is the symbol of Bilbao, but this Bilbao went beyond that. This is the metro system, the pedestrian connection, connecting art and infrastructure. This bridge, for instance, is a collaboration between the most prestigious sculpture of the last century in the Basque Country and one of the most prestigious engineers. This combination between art and infrastructure is important, but they created hotels, new architecture, art in the city, new bridges, 
new waterfronts. This is very interesting example because Moscow, one of the key challenges that after this uh, experience of the of the um, uh, competition for the new territories happened. This idea of emphasizing the new dialogue between the city of Moscow and the river, which is really important. Now Bilbao is facing a new period of the knowledge transformation, of the knowledge revolution. This is Bilbao today, how the morphology has an impact in the urban development, and this is metropolitan Bilbao. This space synthesis analysis shows the level of centrality. Innovation and centrality in city goes together. You see the center of the city, the historical center, and the, and the ensanche, which is the historical fabric of Bilbao, is where Bilbao is now creating the technology parks. In, instead of creating technology parks in the suburban area, in the periphery, the idea for Bilbao is to use the urban transformation to promote innovation in the city center. These are points of excellence, points of innovation, existing initiatives in the center of Bilbao, and these are the different networks of the arts, services, economy, digital technology, banks, connecting clusters, connecting cluster with urban form. And this is the digital Bilbao, an intersection between physical and digital to create this uh, knowledge revolution in Bilbao. And these are some of the transformation that Bilbao is facing. This is an old motorway entering the city. Cities of the 21st century do not need motorways. We need another typology of roads inside the city. Probably eco boulevards could be more uh, uh, <clears throat> reasonable than having motorways in the center of the city. This motorway will be a green road, and there is a possibility of, tra of transforming this motorway. Excuse me. This motorway into a sky, a sky garden. Okay, this is a, a new generation of motorways for pedestrians, the super motorway for bicycles and for pedestrians in, uh, in Bilbao. This is an old neighborhood in Bilbao that will be transformed into a technology park. New typologies of architecture for innovation. These are the cubes of innovation. These are all industrial sites. The old industrial sites uh, will be also key for the transformation of the center of the city. I have some difficulties to, to move again the slides. Okay, these are all industrial sites that can be really transformed into uh, spaces uh, of uh, innovation in the center of the city. These are the industrial space in Moscow, the tremendous potential of urban requalification and urban renovation in the center of Moscow is really impressive. This is the experience, <clears throat> the experience of Bilbao. This is the sky, the sky garden and the transformation of the river and the transformation of the road as a key component of the uh, requalification of the whole of the whole city. I think it doesn't work the Do you the, have any problem, Dr. Vigara? Eh? Коллеги, мы можем, можем Motion. помочь докладчику? No. Вы можете переключить централизованное, но я боюсь, что доктору Вигара важно, чтобы работал okay. Клинкер. This, uh -huh. this is Bilbao, and the idea is to transform the city center and then the neighborhoods. Eh? This is the city center of the transformation of Bilbao. This is the different neighborhoods. This is the per capita income of the neighborhoods. Having a balanced city need to work with neighborhoods. In the case of the, of the Moscow, neighborhoods is also key. These are different cities of the, of the world, and this is, a, I would like to share with you an analysis of the micro region of Moscow. 
these are the micro rayon. Only <clears throat> less than 15% of the surface is occupied by building. But in London, New York, Shanghai, Sao Paulo, the percentage of the land occupied by buildings is much higher than in the micro rayon. The opportunity to transform micro rayon into eco communities in Moscow. This is really a key component. And then to have a dialogue with a different scale of thinking and different scale of planning. Uh, to finalize my presentation, I would like to share one idea that is every successful city in the world is trying to discover its own ADN, it, its own identity. For a city to be relevant, need to be based on strength. I remember when we studied urbanism at the school, at the university, our teacher told us you should uh, discover the problems of the city and solving the problems. This is important, but this is not enough in an hyper-competitive environment. We need to discover for each city its own identity, its own idiosyncrasy, its own component of excellence. These components of excellence are interconnected. They create the cluster of excellence of the city. And this cluster of excellence can inspire strategic projects, strategic acupuncture projects for the transformation of the city. This is the methodology of the cluster of excellence that will connect economic cluster, physical form, digital space and physical space and try to use the city as engines of the transformation of the economy of the country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Vigara. I believe the vibrant, interesting presentation and answering directly to the questions about the uh, dialogue with the river. Uh, so virtually we have now Bilbao as a case study, success story or example that we can use and use the, the tune of the Moscow River, the, uh, the music, take the music of Bilbao and fill it with the Russian verse, uh, the Russian wording. So I would like to pass the floor to Renier de Gras, uh, a participant of the Moscow uh, agglomeration contest, who was uh, jointly with me preparing some uh, suggestions and offers to understand the idea of the big Moscow and the values of the big Moscow. So please, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Alexander, for, for this kind introduction. Um, I'm going to uh, embark on a rather uh, risky effort uh, in the sense that as an outsider, uh, I'm going to talk about Moscow in Moscow to Moscovites uh, on, on something uh, you infinitely uh, experience from much closer uh, to heart. Um, I would like to show the remnants of, of an exercise we did uh, earlier this year uh, for the city government, which was in a way thinking uh, about uh, big Moscow and, and, and conclusions we uh, drew from that. Um, one thing I, I have to say immediately, uh, um, for us this is a very, very macro uh, subject because uh, even though Moscow may be in need of a dialogue with the river. Uh, in a way, what we perceive uh, is that Moscow is in a way in need of two dialogues uh, more, probably, than a dialogue with the river. The first one is uh, for us that it's essential that Moscow embarks on a new dialogue with Russia. Uh, the second one is that Moscow embarks on a new dialogue with its uh, people and, and between those two extremes, uh, in a way this presentation uh, is, is structured. This is, uh, okay, it's there. Uh, this is a map of the world uh, and it shows uh, all the parts in the world where there is currently uh, urban growth, where currently the city uh, is growing and, and where roughly 50% uh, of mankind currently uh, lives. This is that same map. I'm, I'm going to be terribly sorry. Yeah. Okay. Towards the sky. 
<laughs> right. Um, okay. Um, this is that same map with uh, Russia, and, and what is kind of interesting, that if you don't draw the vast border of Russia on this map, Russia is curiously absent uh, in a discussion uh, about urbanization. There's one exception, and that exception is uh, Moscow, curiously uh, enough. Uh, this is... This is Moscow, uh, kind of uh, when drawn like this, uh, kind of almost a hole uh, in, in the ozone uh, layer. Uh, a large uh, city, currently number 18 on the list of uh, the world's largest uh, agglomerations. So let's look at Moscow. This is Moscow on that earlier map. Uh, this is the border uh, of Moscow. And what you see in a way is that the agglomeration of Moscow is clearly bigger uh, than the city border uh, of Moscow, but not uh, that much bigger. So if one takes a look at the same list and actually compares uh, cities proper, not agglomerations, but cities uh, and their population under a single mayor, that Moscow all of a sudden drum jumps up to place five, which means that Moscow has a relatively exceptional position in the amount of people it has uh, actually under a single uh, power, which, like, for instance, with a lot of cases like Paris uh, and Los Angeles is, for instance, certainly not the, the case. Uh, Russia shrinks on the whole, but uh, especially the Russian countryside shrinks. Moscow grows, and that is another very interesting exception, where a lot of the megacities in the world are simply uh, the tip of the icebergs of countries with a very rapidly uh, growing population. Moscow uh, is not growing because of Russia. Moscow is largely growing at the expense uh, of Russia, and, and that results in a certain increasing asymmetry, where Russia has 8%, 1% of the territory, 8% of the population, 10% of the employment, 22% of the Russian economy, and 65% uh, of all Russian investment happening on a very, very small part of, of Russia's territory. To the point that I think we can say that since uh, the early 90s, uh, Moscow uh, and Russia have uh, a, a kind of interesting inverse uh, evolution, where the closer you get to the present, uh, the more you need to go to an eye doctor uh, for actually Russia to, to register. All of this uh, clearly, of course, uh, affects the relationship uh, between the two. This is a conversation between the Moscow mayor uh, and the country's uh, prime minister, but it is quite legitimate to kind of wonder who actually talks to who uh, in this sense. This is uh, a map of Moscow. Uh, the little numbers are uh, border checkpoints uh, along the MCOT, uh, which particularly are to prevent people from illegally uh, entering uh, the city, uh, since the city increasingly is becoming economically and employment-wise more desirable uh, than the area around it. Uh, Moscow has a disproportionate share in contributing to the military, protecting the city. Moscow, uh, since it's a special terrorism target, has a special no-fly zone uh, where helicopters uh, bypass the city. Uh, and of course, Moscow is also uh, the home to the federal uh, government, which was an important subject, uh, at least at one point, uh, of the whole big Moscow uh, exercise. This is the federal, uh, the property of the federal government uh, in Moscow. This, uh, this is the general ambiance uh, in, in which that federal government uh, takes place. And, and of course, the, the whole security issue in the middle of the city um, increasingly leads to a situation which where government building, public buildings, which are actually a part of the city, uh, set themselves uh, apart. Uh, from the city. Uh, in that context, uh, in that context, um, an exercise was uh, launched, um, an exercise to expand Moscow to about two and a half times its present uh, size, but not only expand Moscow, this expansion was closely uh, related to a program to uh, relocate some of the federal government facilities uh, along with it uh, into the new uh, territory. So this is where uh, we got involved. Uh, and, and, and the first question, the uh, first very tasteless question uh, we asked was, why? 
uh, why now and why uh, here? Uh, because if you look at Moscow historically, the city has a long tradition of expansions, but all of those expansions have happened uh, concentrically. In that case, uh, it would be uh, predictable or to be expected that, that Moscow beyond the MCOT would actually uh, expand in a circular fashion uh, around the city uh, where it would comprise uh, something like four million uh, people. And we very innocently asked why did this not uh, happen? Um, to some extent, uh, Moscow is different from its surroundings, not only because it's more urban, but also because citizens of Moscow enjoy a special uh, status uh, in the context of a lot of uh, social provisions, whereby clearly in terms of federal spending uh, and government spending, uh, it is simply more expensive to be a Moscovite than to be a non-Moscovite. Uh, this is the identity card uh, of a citizen of the Moscow region. Uh, this is the identity card of... Uh... So you're not going to hit me, no? no. Uh, this is the uh, identity card of a Moscovite, essentially uh, suspiciously resembling a credit card. Of course, there are many Moscovites in Moscow who are not really Moscovites, uh, who drive an economy, uh, an increasingly large economy, an economy that doesn't register uh, for tax purposes, but is nevertheless a very considerable size of the city's uh, economy. Um, these people live in circumstances uh, very generic to Moscow, but in theory, at least in our theory, like uh, almost anywhere else uh, in the world, that economy could actually contribute, in theory, to a regeneration of the city, as it has done in London, New York, uh, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, uh, etc. Anyway. Um, so we looked. The budget required for four and a half million uh, people, according to Moscow standards, or according to region standards, essentially meant that the concentric expansion from a social uh, provision point of view would be too expensive uh, and that therefore clearly uh, part of the reason of choosing this territory is that it claims land but it misses people. Um, we looked uh, at, at Moscow, particularly the relation uh, between Moscow and the Moscow region where Moscow is in the region uh, but not part of the region which generates interesting situations, particularly around the border of the city, such as the strange discussion around Khimki highways, but which also creates uh, strange situations immediately around the city, where a lot of people now permanently inhabit their temporary home, while officially they stay residents of Moscow, uh, claim provisions, while already the temporary homes are, are transforming into permanent neighborhoods. So, one of the, the simple proposals uh, for us was to think what would happen if one simply, simply for a moment considered that distinction not to be there. And in other words, that simply Moscow became a municipality like the other municipalities in Moscow Oblast. That the uh, diagram that organizes Moscow's status in the context of the Russian Federation, which already in a way is a sort of a bilateral relation given Moscow's importance, would be extended to also include the region uh, in a kind of merger where a larger uh, territory occupied a special status inside the Russian Federation. Uh, we also took the liberty uh, of designing an organigram uh, of the future uh, governments as a form of uh, our first step at job creation. Um, and inherently that entity would become this entity. It contains roughly just under 20 million people which inherently would make Moscow the biggest city uh, in the world, uh, which would make the size of Moscow resemble, one minute, I'm nearly done, uh, the size of Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland inherently uh, has a very interesting position inside Europe, where it's uh, inside Europe but not part of Europe, where it's part of Europe but not part of the European Union and where the exceptional status of Switzerland is actually to the mutual benefit both of Switzerland and, and Europe and where the economic differences are exploited very carefully and opportunistically uh, for the greater good of, of both. So to cut a long story short, 
uh, such a, a kind of special administrative region for a, a city which has already developed so far uh, in a different direction than Russia uh, was a recommendation to be considered, whereby a previous relation would actually give way to a new relation and, and uh, particularly a different dialogue at the larger scale. That was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 friends, uh, he is uh, suggesting uh, to uh, to speak on a different, uh, uh, to move our subject uh, to a different level, to discuss it from a different angle. And uh, the river and the Dnieper and the land, and we talked about the relationship uh, with the people in the country and in the city. Uh, thank you very much. Now the floor uh, goes to Ostergaard. Uh, Paul Ostergaard uh, participated uh, in uh, the competition, uh, and uh, that's why so we are listening uh, to the leaders of this competition, of the standard. Ten minutes, please. Thank you all very much. I'm honored to be on this panel. I was part of the Capital Cities Planning Group, uh, who, and we recently participated in the international competition along with eight other uh, fantastic teams. We all learned from one another. It was a wonderful collegial environment for all of us to share uh, ideas. My uh, presentation will include concepts about the future of Moscow that we prepared for that competition and the points of view of our English, Canadian, and American team. One of the questions asked of this panel is what is the role of the Moscow agglomeration in the economic development of Russia. If civilizations are defined by their cities, the future growth of Moscow should be a federal priority of the highest order, similar to planning the nation's defense or fostering critical international relationships. Proper planning and management of the agglomeration will be the most significant economic development opportunity of Russia we believe, for the next generation. Moscow should set high standards for sustainable development to place itself in a leadership role internationally. Building the agglomeration will help Russia diversify its economy from one dependent on oil to a more diverse and sustainable economy by introducing the latest technologies in energy production, environmental resource management, and research. Building the agglomeration will help Russia create new lifestyles by offering a far more diverse range of housing, living conditions, work environments for your capital city. Another question for this panel was in, in the brochure and the program was uh, how to do we strike a balance between the power at, at budgets at the local level, the regional level, and federal scales. For Moscow, a proper balance sh should be created um, between reinvestment in old Moscow and investment in new Moscow. Over the last 50 years, many cities in the United States spent too much money on their periphery and not enough on protecting and improving their centers. The result was catastrophic for cities like Detroit and St. Louis. Moscow should grow. The historic medieval center is overloaded, however. Too much of the future of the city is concentrated, we believe, in the historic core. S something must give. Jobs should be distributed through the region rather than concentrated just in the center. New mixed-use centers should be built in the periphery. Let's see. There we go. Uh, connecting the old center, but self-sustaining satellite towns in and of themselves. This will relieve many of the pressures facing the core. So our approach as a part of the t uh, this team was a dual strategy of looking at old Moscow at the same time we're investing in new Moscow. Moscow's brownfield sites on the Moscow River close to the center should be redeveloped 
to introduce new industries, advanced research, and new housing into the center of the city. Pittsburgh in the United States made this transition from an industrial economy to a more diversified post-industrial economy. The way they did it was with partnerships between industry, the city government, and the neighborhoods with little federal intervention. Also, key participants included universities, developers, and interested citizens from many of the neighborhoods in Pittsburgh. Those steel plants you saw a minute ago completely disappeared within 10 years, and we were left with empty sites very close to our downtown. So our city chose to concentrate on those immediate, those brownfield sites immediate to the downtown. Soviet era neighborhoods should be revitalized not with a top-down approach, we believe, but by using a grassroots strategy, public planning that actively involves residents in figuring out what to do with their neighborhood. Neighborhood plans will likely include repairs to existing housing, introduction of new housing, and restoration of public space. Over the past 30 years, cities in the United States have been revitalizing inner-city neighborhoods. The revitalization plans are created in public forums involving residents, housing officials, and developers. Money comes from multiple sources and is never easy to find. But the, the, each plan is unique because each neighborhood is unique. Moscow has remarkable public space that has been overrun by the automobile. By reducing the pressures on your historic core, you can restore your public spaces to be more balanced in their use and reclaim them from the tyranny of the automobile. London and many other European cities can show you the way to managing the car in a historic environment. Our work uh, this year included creating a vision for the new Moscow. Moscow has a good start by seeking advice from many world experts with a recent international competition and with a, discussing the challenges and opportunities in conferences like this one. The vision should begin with the land and the waterways. A, region, a regional open space strategy should be created that protects natural resources and forms continuous corridors of forests and waterways. Development will follow infrastructure. Uh, as was pointed out earlier, the east coast of the United States is a huge megacity, and infrastructure there follows the highway and rail corridors that connect the cities together. The Department of Transportation in the United States is the most powerful federal planning agency in, in the country because it defines projects that influence patterns of growth. Highways and ra fast rail services tie Washington to other cities. And Moscow, we believe, needs fast rail service between uh, this city and Western Europe and other uh, important regional capitals in Moscow to reduce the distances between, between them. So we have seen that, that uh, urban density follows infrastructure patterns. This is Washington, D.C. And this is Moscow. And you can see the radial uh, patterns going out from the city are following the Russian rail system. Let's see if we can get this going. So uh, our approach to uh, looking at the new district was to first look at rail transit by expanding the metro system and by expanding the Russian rail system and trying to create as fast a link as we could between the new federal center in the agglomeration and the Kremlin itself. We think we can get that time, uh, travel time down to about 12 minutes with fast rail. We also believe you need to create an adequate network of highways and roads that connect uh, land to the city and the region. This is essential to provide easy communication in this district and to create land value for development. In the United States, most land use plans are done at the local level. 
And we would expect here that cities like Troitsk and other uh, municipalities in the Moscow region will participate with you in developing land use strategies and patterns for the district. This was our proposal um, during this very uh, interesting and quick study uh, of, of how to uh, distribute land uses, but to primarily c concentrate them in four urban centers. We believe it's important to create the mechanisms, um, the idea of creating a, a greater Moscow development agency that will help coordinate all of the activities of developers and municipalities in the region, and of creating the Greater Moscow Development Bank which will help raise the long-term patient capital that you're going to need to fund major investments. Um, and uh, a, a lot of this money could come from oil stabilization funds, from bonds, and from the city, and it will be used to fund important infrastructure projects and green projects in the region. We also believe, we also believe that it's important to uh, uh, consider the idea of moving parts of your federal government to this new district because and to concentrate them in one area for ease of communication um, amongst the various uh, agencies. Now agglomerations can be frightening things as cities grow that you can create some pretty horrible places and you have a head start on that you've been creating some very inhuman places uh, currently, and we want to forestall some of those negative trends uh, for Moscow. So planning a new mixed-use centers and creating new urban districts and towns is what we recommend as an approach for the future. This is a plan that we proposed for the new federal capital district near Kamyanarka. It includes a government district a world financial center where, the, where there's a special boundary to attract international capital um, and to reduce the regulatory requirements and perhaps to even include a university to create a dynamic economic development powerhouse for uh, Moscow. Uh -huh. And so in the end we believe I'm you, sure you can it. create a very humane environment and um, we believe that a new Moscow is definitely possible there's a lot of wisdom and tech, uh, uh, there's a lot of expertise in the world marketplace today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, so thus, uh, correct me if not. So this on uh, this this uh, this is a very cheerful note. Uh, this is wonderful that the that the transport the creation of construction matrix will certainly uh, will lead to the recapitalization of land assets and will help to develop uh, issues that will might help to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to raise uh, to raise money to raise funding financing increase the value of the land and and the proper develop uh, the uh, the future agglomeration. Tatiana Maeva, in my view, uh, so the best specialist in human potential, human resources, and uh, who uh, handles the work in the Presidential Economic Council, and she is the pride of uh, the uh, Moscow State University Department. She is one of our best graduates, and we are proud. Thank you for the kind words, and uh, I hope that everyone understands that uh, we go back a long way, have been working together for a long time. But I'd like to start by saying that in spite of the fact that I'm a Moscovite, I was born, grew up in Moscow, and that uh, and uh, and in spite of the fact that I go back several generations, my parents were born in Moscow, raised in Moscow, and still I am a young Moscovite because the institute that I represent uh, uh, is the Institute of Humanitarian Development of uh, the Metropolis. It's less than a year old, uh, uh, you know, Humanitarian Development of Megapolis. And uh, so we said... Uh, and uh, uh, so then the development of Moscow. So uh, the metropolis uh, the, uh, and the social challenges much depends on the prospects of the development of cities uh, uh, of Russia in general, because many will be replicated. And I think that uh, I would like to, there is a demographic concern that I am worried very much. Uh, and it worries me very much. And so, and uh, this concern was expressed by our foreign colleagues as well. And I'd like to uh, address another issue. Yes, we know very well uh, how quickly 
And uh, uh, so then the, the situation in uh, the demographic situation is not so bad. And the statistics show, and uh, so then the censuses uh, show that. But from the viewpoint of what we would like to have, and uh, what we will have eventually, the social face of Moscow, the largest uh, city of Moscow, is uh, this. There is another point which is important. It's not just how many will be, but who uh, 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 these people will be. The demographic uh, breakdown, the demographic structure. Uh, so this is what is very important. So uh, the old and new, the new Moscow. It's not uh, how many, but who. And so we need just to pay attention to how in the Russian Federation in general and Moscow specifically. Uh, so this process, uh, so the birth rate is rising. This is good. But at the same time, I'd like to give a caveat. Uh, if we do not uh, overcome uh, so the demographic factors of Moscow development, we can say that Moscow uh, is getting older sooner than it is being rejuvenated. Uh, 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 which uh, uh, which gives the, the increased uh, uh, birth rate because this this is the challenge for the of the future uh, 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 social factor. So because if the share of the population and the, so there's one or two, because the birth rate is negative. so the social the, the so the social services to the or to the uh, or aging population will be increasing. They will not be able just to pre, to create any additional product, and so they will not contribute to the GDP. Or if the population of uh, elderly people will continue to get older and older, and uh, so then uh, it means that the city will require. Uh, uh, more jobs uh, 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 for the elderly people. Uh, if they if, uh, so, then the high birth rate in Moscow—that's good news. That's right. But at the same time, we need to realize that we, we did the census, and we realized that together with the good news, there are come committing bad news. And uh, so, and uh, that makes Moscow different from other uh, cities of Russia, which is the prevalence prevalence of high, uh, 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 prevalence of uh, single child families. That's what makes Moscow different from other cities of Russia. There is another characteristic which makes Moscow different from other cities, is child free movement. It's not the absence of children, but the absence of desire to have children in the family. And this is bad news. Uh, because Russia can be likened uh, to uh, many Western uh, cities' uh, trends. Uh, and, uh, and and here, there's, there's a migration influx, a very powerful migration influx, uh, and the social demogra uh, dem uh, demographic, the, 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 the migration, inter-regional migration is gaining ground. And so it's only going in one direction, from the regions to Moscow. It's only one way. But this, uh, this powerful migration influx cannot make the demographic uh, uh, composition any younger. And that is why, so when you were asking, so whether it came by agglomeration with a human face or uh, or absence of this face, uh, and uh, and uh, so this an 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 uncertain disparate development of demography uh, makes it difficult to make any sustainable conclusions for the future. And we spoke about uh, that there is a high level of differentiation. That Moscow is not the most expensive city with the, with the highest uh, cost of living. Uh, but there is an internal uh, differentiation of the city. The certification is very high. Uh, uh, so that's why we can say uh, that, uh, my dear Moscovites, I'm quoting the lines of a famous Russian song, but for our Western colleagues, we need to, uh, uh, so not dear, but expensive. And uh, in this respect, we can say on the one hand, the specifics of Moscow, on the other hand, that determines the differentiation, this gamut, uh, uh, this palette uh, uh, of the composition of uh, uh, Moscovites as uh, vis a vis uh, its uh, demographic co uh, uh, co uh, composition. So unlike many other cities of Moscow and others, uh, uh, Moscow managed to address some issues. So, so the biggest achievement of Moscow that it managed to accomplish is to reduce uh, uh, the poverty level and the child poverty. Uh, we managed to reduce it. That's a big contribution. Uh, but at the same time, the people of pension uh, pension age, uh, uh, single uh, pensioners, uh, retired people, so that's there. Uh, it's right. It's rising. It means that social services, social st institutions, social structures just need to address this issue. Uh, so what is it? Uh, is a, is a, is a happy uh, old age? Uh, so, but single old age pensioners. So, so how what how much they need to make just to live decently, uh, decently uh, in 
Moscow uh, 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 the remaining years of their life. And as there, we need to uh, look at another issue. We need to show how uh, the Moscovites react to this issue. Uh, generally, so the absolute majority of responses to these issues is positive. But at the same time, we see that at the fore, the quality of transportation, that's the issue that cons uh, is ongoing concern. And so there are lots of pessimistic answers. 25% of the, of the, uh, of, uh, uh, the residents of Moscow, uh, they're, they're very unhappy uh, in uh, uh, in in, uh, in in the area of uh, uh, transportation. Then the second is uh, uh, retail is not so good. Then the third place uh, is in, sp in, 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 uh, in spite of the fact that Moscow is trying to get greener and greener and competes uh, uh, with many cities of the world from the viewpoint of uh, the green area. Still parks, uh, reserves, preserves, uh, so it still is a big challenge. And uh, so this is number three priority from the viewpoint of Moscovites, the way Moscovites look at it. And these are the three most important issues that Moscovites attach uh, uh, their concerns. Uh, then the transportation uh, is, the, is the most acute issue, and it's no secret for Moscow, for the rest of the world, for the rest of the country, that from social problems, it has always been the issue related to health care, health care and uh, uh, construction, uh, and providing medical Medicare services, uh, uh, and this is the problem number one. Uh, in, uh, and uh, we speak a lot, and we understand that Moscow is the center of a great deal of uh, educational potential. So then still, in the eyes of the Moscovites, uh, they do not think that it's so important. And, uh, and, uh, and in the educational area, many issues are not addressed as well. And the other problem, number 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 two, number three, that goes along with the in a, inadequate infra, infra, uh, transportation infrastructure, so quick access to quality education, and all the their uh, schools, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, kindergartens, uh, uh, colleges, uh, higher education. So very difficult to get access. Uh, so there's low accessibility because of the transportation uh, uh, problems. And so, but many, many Moscovites think that the, the Moscow is developing in the right direction. And the final diagnosis depends on the, in the angle, the how, how people look. So half of the Moscovites, they, they, they regard that Moscow, they think that Moscow is developing uh, properly. But 25% of Moscovites think that Moscow is not moving in the right direction. So the every fourth Moscovite thinks that there are many social issues to be addressed. And that is why the issue whether the agglomeration may be may have a human face uh, is still is an open question and um, but um, but the most uh, burning issue that i would like to concentrate uh, and uh, many asked this question earlier uh, 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 which is uh, at the end of the day uh, uh, should uh, the entire Russia should ask this question what is the social function what is the social structure of the capital what is the social function? It's not Moscow borrows resources uh, from the rest of Russia, but what is the response of Russia? What Russia has to, what, what Moscow has to give, what Moscow has to contribute. Uh, so what kind, what, uh, so how Moscow can can address the issues that Russia is suffering from? And uh, so then uh, the role of elites uh, and the role of social institutions in the formation of Moscow, and uh, what role do they play? And uh, uh, the so-called middle class, Moscow middle class, uh, which in our view, in our evaluation, is about 35 percent of uh, of the of Moscow population. That's good news. 35 percent is middle class. Good figure. 30 percent of the population of Moscow uh, uh, can uh, uh, so they think themselves as the middle class. But at the same time, it, it means the following. So it's not only that Moscow middle class sets the standards of life in Moscow, but the main function of Moscow middle class it's not consumption, and it's not retail. It's not even demand for services, the most social uh, uh, role of uh, the middle class is to translate, to tell to, for the, to the rest of Russia the living standards, the standards of consumption, standards of relationship to life, living the standards, social services relationship. And when they said Moscow sets up the standards, so now we now understand why in Moscow people's reputations are so high. 
because many Moscovites, irrespective of what social status they belong, so still uh, they uh, certainly they claim uh, that uh, would be in conformity with the ideas, uh, with the views of middle Moscow and middle class. Moreover, middle Moscow middle class uh, is uh, a very powerful entity. Thing is that the same standards that they share, the same expectations and the same criteria, uh, the, uh, the will be uh, uh, so. The, the the rest of Russia uh, uh, follows the example, and they're, they're going to apply. They replicate. So when we talk about the middle of Russia, uh, everyone in the most uh, uh, remote one horse town just will look up at Russia, will look at Moscow, and will look and measure measure themselves up against the expectations that Moscow middle class has. And uh, and so on then in any and uh, so always uh, working on the assumption of the standards and expectations that the Moscow middle class has demonstrates uh, lives by and what Moscow middle class has, and this is a very important point benchmark. And uh, I would like just to look at the social responsibility of Moscow in. Uh, uh, vis-à-vis uh, -vis the rest of Moscow uh, uh, from the viewpoint of the vector of social development. So this actually we heard the voice of uh, Moscow middle class that is dictating to the rest of Russia how we need to live and evolve. So this the last speaker, uh, Uma Dusavili, uh, uh, Mrs. Dusavili has no presentation, but uh, we need uh, to uh, uh, get her feel to get her thinking and uh, to get her ideas to get the benefit of her experience uh, so that's what that counts five seven minutes please because uh, then we have would like to allow a couple of minutes to uh, uh, to uh, uh, get the uh, answer to mr snow and whether he uh, um, uh. perhaps I can finish in seven minutes as you said sir I come from Mumbai which is the economic center uh, main center in India which is a developing economy and recently turned into market economy. Uh, I was very encouraged to hear this morning the mayor of uh, Moscow and the vice mayor uh, and the, uh, indicating the level of involvement they have with the planning and development of Moscow and the projects, including planning projects, which is very different from where uh, I come. Uh, mostly the politicians in our area are uh, involved with the projects in their constituency and not uh, in the interest of the city as a whole. Um, Mumbai has a metropolitan region which is 10 times larger than its area. This was delineated in the early 1970s for which there was a metropolitan plan prepared and a development authority is created to implement the uh, development that is envisaged in this area. And uh, if I must say what are the characteristics of this metropolitan area and its development and the conflicts arising in developing this area. Uh, the recent trends in the last two decades indicate that Mumbai city is growing at, a, uh, at, at uh, eight times less rate than uh, the rest of the urban area in the region and at least one third uh, uh, less than uh, the whole development of the region as such. There are 17 municipalities, municipal towns in this region and a thousand villages and uh, tigers also live around in Mumbai city. We have one of the uh, distinctions of distinction of being one of the probably two or three cities in the world which has a protected forest reserved forest in the middle of the city and we have the substantial area under forest and substantial area under coastal wetland and a uh, highly regarded regulated coastal zone regulations uh, across the country which do not permit development along the coastal areas up to 500 meters from the coast in Mumbai. Mumbai being a coastal city feels that this is a great constraint uh, on its development. And uh, the thousand villages that exist in the um, region pose a great uh, uh, opportunity at the same time a constraint in the sense that some of them are identified to have the potential to become urbanized in the near future and uh, after an exercise of careful delineation of what is to be conserved in the region, uh, these areas are identified as urbanizable. However, the planned transformation of these rural areas into urbanization is not an easy process. It requires administrative reboundary uh, creations and uh, preparation of spatial plans for these areas and changing the mindset of people uh, to, towards taxation, uh, payment of taxes and to be responsible uh, citizens like uh, what an urban citizen is expected to be. And um, 
The strategies adopted in Mumbai to achieve some of these uh, tasks are, they started actually with the delineation of Mumbai metropolitan region. As I just heard how it is done in Moscow, uh, in Mumbai the region was distinguished uh, uh, on the basis of trends of urbanization that were shown around Mumbai and not economic correlations because uh, probably economic correlation of Mumbai extends to Moscow. Uh, it was based on transportation ease, public transportation ease and the urbanization trends. That's an important point when a delineation of uh, any region or agglomeration is uh, undertaken. Secondly, uh, the strategy used in Mumbai was to identify various growth centers in the region and channelize uh, uh, divert existing growth in the Mumbai city or channelize uh, new growth that is expected to come up in this region. The ways by which this was done was to identify new growth centers in the Mumbai city itself, uh, such as most of the economic activities were concentrated in the South Mumbai, such as ports, uh, then industries, then administrative center of the city and the state, the province, as well as uh, business districts and stock exchange. Everything was located in the southern tip of Mumbai. So two or three northbound growth poles are identified in Mumbai and with great state intervention they were developed. And uh, similarly outside Mumbai city in the delineated region, new towns were identified uh, with substantial investment in land banking as well as in infrastructure creation and housing creation were made by the government and uh, which are realized through sale of this land which is accumulated uh, in public sector. At the same time, uh, it was uh, made sure that the new towns that are coming up around Mumbai, new growth centers, have an economic base of their own and they don't uh, otherwise uh, uh, otherwise they would have become satellite towns where people would live but commute to Mumbai for uh, jobs. The manner in which they are tried to be created is to locate them around an economic base. For example, I worked for a long time on creation of uh, New Bombay project, which is a new town. And this is centered around a new central business district that was planned. At the same time, a new port that was coming up in that area. And it was also planned to shift the state capital complex from Mumbai to New Mumbai. Uh, what now we call Navi Mumbai and uh, also uh, industrial decentralization was planned in this area and the industries from Mumbai were compulsorily shifted to these new areas. So the strategies used for either identify a new growth pole around an ec existing economic base in the region or identify the activities within this existing city, main city that is like Moscow, which need not be any more located in Mumbai. Uh, sorry, any more located in Moscow. What was identified in Mumbai was to uh, was that the wholesale markets and uh, textile industries need not be uh, continuing in Mumbai. So, by an act of uh, uh, legislature, they were compulsorily shifted to New Bombay city, and uh, it took more than a decade for them to. Uh, understand, appreciate and uh, uh, evolve their economy around that. But today it's a great success story of moving wholesale markets in the agriculture and steel sectors. Uh, then uh, there, the potential conflicts uh, in the region around planning were arising on account of uh, each municipality becoming fiercely independent in terms of their planning efforts, in terms of their infrastructure creation efforts. So some kind of balance is created where these interests are safeguarded through legislative provisions and not infringed on uh, uh, through metropolitan efforts. And a lot of institutional mechanisms are created which are controlled by the state and they have a regional view and they have regional resource pooling uh, in terms of finances and uh, institutions and redistribution of uh, very clearly defined roles. And these are some of the safeguards which are used in Mumbai metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. But just to remind you in the end, uh, the economic concentration of the nation or of the province uh, in one city such as in Moscow can lead to on the long run uh, a situation of polarization where we, uh, we are facing similar situation in Mumbai. The local leaders and the political wisdom today thinks that uh, the wealth belongs to them alone and not to the nation. So there is a divisive politics which started from there. So one must just watch it. Thank you. Thank you. Спасибо, спасибо. Я понял, что есть при массе. I know that. Uh, mm -hmm.
Но отличие. Когда тигры живут в городе... And division of authorities, and uh, of course, we have been having public consultations for the government of the city. Have you got any results uh, after that? Yes, indeed, indeed. So, uh, all the uh, presentations are extremely interesting. I listened to all of them, and I noticed a general trend that each presentation was showing. But the main thing is the role of a human being. So, the, everybody thought about the people. The uh, human being who lives in this uh, city, who uh, whatever middle class, or they may be living in affluent areas, poor, you know, coming visitors or uh, dwellers, residents. So everything we should we do uh, should be liked by the people. So our main goal is to uh, uh, to please the people who are living this, to make their life comfortable. Another thing that I felt everybody spoke about is the relations, relations between between the satellite uh, cities, between the territories, the regions. I liked it so much when my Spanish colleague was uh, showing the way Europe was developing. What are the connections, the link, inter interwoven uh, agglomerations uh, that actually expanded beyond the official boundaries. So uh, very strict, uh, very clear, tangible links that really uh, motivate us to build Moscow agglomeration in such a way to consider all those links of Moscow, of the city with the uh, Moscow Oblast and the Central Federal Region to Russia so that Moscow, yes, we heard that we were impressed by our colleagues' presentation about the importance of the place of Moscow within Russia. The place of Moscow in the uh, international and the global map. And all those ideas and proposals will definitely motivate us uh, to uh, to plan the city in such a way that we could consider all those important things. And being here at this forum, we believe we are doing exactly, you know, increasing capitalization, intellectual capitalization of Moscow as agglomeration. I'm so grateful for all the presenters to come in spite of the end of the working day, you stay back, uh, you are patient and uh, listen to all the presentation. It means they are working for you and the topic is important. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you, yes. Uh, and that's where we want to wrap our, up our plenary session and thank all the attendees and participants. Thank you. Мы продолжим завтра в 9.30 утра. Пожалуйста, не забудьте сдать оборудование синхронного перевода. Спасибо. Dear forum participants, thank you for your contribution to today's sessions. We will continue tomorrow morning from 9.30. Please do not forget to hand in your simultaneous translation equipment as you leave. Информацию о вечерних культурных мероприятиях вы найдете в программе форума. Information on the evening's cultural events is available in the forum's cultural program booklets. Thank you.